Hey y'all, I'm Tammy and welcome to my empty nest. And these are the ingredients that we're going to need. I don't know if this thing actually has a name. We have never called it anything except the cream cheese thingy. So, but it's good, y'all. It's really good. So, first off, preheat your oven to 350 and spray whatever pans you're going to use. Then we're going to take two blocks of softened cream cheese and add a cup and a half of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla to that. And then we're going to mix it up until it's smooth. Now, if you don't have time to sit your cream cheese out to get it um, softened, you can always sit it on your stove top. And as your oven preheats, it will um, go ahead and soften up your cream cheese. So once you get your mixture all done, you're going to take your one of your uh, things of crescent rolls and you're going to put a layer in the bottom of each one of your pans or if you do a 9 by 13 that's fine too and then you would just lay the entire thing out across the bottom so just spread it out as good as you can and then you're going to add half of your cream cheese mixture to each of these pans and then you're going to want to spread that out in a pretty even you know layer and then once you get that all spread out, you're going to add your second can of crescent rolls. If you can get it open, because I about threw both my thumbs out trying to get the darn thing open, y'all. But I did. I prevailed. And uh, we're going to get this dessert done. So you take this second can of crescent rolls and you're going to lay this across the top of each one of your pans. And try to press those little seams together if you can. If you can't, it's not a big deal. But, you know, if you want your crust to go from edge to edge, just try to pinch those together and spread it out as best as you can. And then once you get this top layer of crescent rolls on, you're going to take... A little, I think I did about a tablespoon of butter. Just melt that. Then you're just going to brush that on the top so your uh, sugar and cinnamon will have something to stick to. And just spread that across both. And then this little container is one of those that has the cinnamon and sugar mixture. I think I got it at the Dollar Tree or something. But if you don't have this, you can always just make your own cinnamon and sugar mixture. But this is so much easier. So just spread that on in a pretty even layer unless you turn it sideways like I did and the sugar hits the top and then you end up with it all wonky on top. But you know what? It tastes just the same, even if it's wonky, y'all. So just do the best you can. So once you get your cinnamon and sugar all on there like you like it, you're going to pop these in the oven for about 30 minutes. And then when they're done, just take them out let them sit on your counter until they cool down and then just put them in the refrigerator. They're always, to me, they're always better like the next day. So do that. Next up, we have Buckeyes. Now, these are the ingredients you're going to need. So uh, we're going to take two and a half cups of powdered sugar and we're going to put that in our little bowl and Y'all, I don't know that I ever knew these things were called Buckeyes. I found them, I think, on the Tasty website. But we always just called them peanut butter balls, you know, because uh, we are sophisticated like that around here. And we use the proper name for everything, clearly. So uh, once you get your powdered sugar in there, you're going to add a cup and a half of creamy peanut butter. And then once you get your peanut butter in your bowl, you're going to add that half a cup of melted butter. And you don't need like a mixer or anything for this. When you do, um, when you add that melted butter to the mixture, it's going to help like melt that peanut butter a little bit. And so it's going to be really, really easy to mix together. And you just pour it in there and just mix it really, really good. Because sometimes, at least in my experience, powdered sugar will sometimes try to clump up. So just stir it really, really well. And like I said, the melted butter really helps get it all, you know, mixed because it melts that peanut butter. 
and it turns out really good. But because you added this hot butter and everything is now warm, you're going to need to take this mixture once you get it. Lord, I am a whip in that. But anyway, once you get it all mixed up good, you're going to just pop it in the freezer for about 20 or 30 minutes. I think I did 30 minutes. If you have to leave it a little bit longer, it's not going to hurt it. I don't know that it would. I mean, I guess if you left it overnight, it would freeze solid. But when you get it out, it's going to be hard like this. So I just took a little cookie scooper, like the medium size one, to scoop it out. Just so I would kind of have uniform size uh, peanut butter balls. So you just scoop them out roll them up and this was another thing that I did that I shouldn't have I put it on the wax paper because I wasn't thinking that because you're rolling these in your hand and it's warming that peanut butter back up you're gonna have to put these back in the freezer so just when you roll them out like this go ahead and put them on a cookie sheet and then pop them back into your freezer for I think I did about another 30 minutes or so so once they come out, you're going to use a toothpick. Now go ahead and melt your chocolate, a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Just melt them in the microwave. It takes about a minute. Just stir it about every 10, 15 seconds so it doesn't, you know, burn so it'll melt smooth. And then you're just going to use your little toothpick and roll them around in that chocolate. And once you get them all um, coated in the chocolate... I, you can leave them on the counter and they'll be fine as long as it's not like warm in your house. But I went ahead and just put them back in the refrigerator and I just keep them in the refrigerator. And then if, you know, you want to get one or two out and eat them, you can. But I don't let them just sit out because I feel like the peanut butter starts to get a little soft. So next up we have snowball cookies. Now here are the ingredients you're going to need for this. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 400, and you're going to want to go ahead and melt that butter also. Now, I used pecans, and these were supposed to be chopped pecans, and I mean, I guess technically they are, but they still had really big chunks in them, and these are really small cookies, or pretty small cookies, so I went ahead and used my handy-dandy food processor right there, and went ahead and got those chopped up a little bit finer because like I said you don't want a big hunk of pecan in a tiny little cookie so if you have a little food processor feel free to use that but this is what I had so this is what I used and look how much better that is perfect so you're going to take two and a quarter cups of flour in your bowl and then you're going to add your three quarters of a cup of whatever chopped nuts you're using walnuts pecans whatever and a half a teaspoon of salt and i realized as i was mixing this that i actually needed this bowl to mix my other ingredients in so you're going to see my dry ingredients do a wardrobe change so in in your bowl you're going to add a half a cup of powdered sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla roughly we just kind of dump it in there and then you're also going to add your butter and then once you get all that added in there you're going to go ahead and if you have a stand mixer and you have your fancy and you have a kitchen aid feel free to use that i have a stand mixer it is not a kitchen aid but I actually don't have it at my house right now because somebody borrowed it and I keep forgetting to get it back. So you're going to go ahead and just use your little hand mixer and mix this up until it's nice and smooth. And then you're going to start a little by little adding those dry ingredients in there. And y'all, when I tell you this hand mixer was not a good idea, I had clouds of flour everywhere. I had hunks of cookies slung from one end of my kitchen to another. But that's okay, because you know what? We made these cookies anyway, and I have to do the cleaning. So if I make the mess, I guess I don't mind having to clean it up. So what you're going to do is take these, and I just have a little uh, tablespoon, like measuring spoon, just again, so I can kind of keep them the same size. And I do get a little baby one out here in a minute. It's really cute, y'all. But you put these on your cookie sheet that's lined with parchment paper and it doesn't matter how close you put these together because they're not like a cookie that's going to rise they just kind of 
just get done, but they're not going to rise or anything. So if they're touching or if they're all, you know, all clumped together on your, your pan, it's not going to make a difference. So you're going to put those in the oven at 400 for about 10 minutes. And I'm just, you can see that the, the bottoms are just kind of lightly browned. Then you want to let them cool off just, just enough to where you can actually handle them. But you don't want them to be cold. You want them to be a little bit warm so that that powdered sugar. Look at that baby, y'all. See right there? That is so cute. But anyway, you want the powdered sugar to stick. So you can just roll these in your powdered sugar, put them on a wire rack, and that way you don't end up with powdered sugar everywhere or at least any more places than where it's already going to be. And then you can do a second coating of powdered sugar once they cool down if you want to. I don't feel like they really need it, so I didn't do that. Now, you're going to need what you need for Rice Krispie treats, butter, marshmallows, Rice Krispies. And then for these, we also needed some green food coloring and some um, sprinkles. Now, you just met your, melt excuse me, your three tablespoons of butter in your pan and then add your bag of mini marshmallows. Stir constantly. Let those cook. When they're almost finished, go ahead and start adding your green food coloring. Now, when I started doing this recipe, I was going to make these Christmas wreaths. But as I was adding this green, it turned way more Grinch green than Christmas green. So since Walmart had messed up my uh, pickup order and they gave me Valentine sprinkles instead of Christmas sprinkles, I had some little hearts. So I thought that would be cute. We would just turn this into something kind of grinchy. So once you get everything melted up, you're going to add your six cups of Rice Krispies and you're going to fling them all over the counter, you know, like every good cook does. And I also, you see, I have the, the parchment paper down there because I was going to do those wreaths, but we have now swapped that out. We've done another wardrobe change and we're going to use this 9 by 13 pan. And I'm just going to take this leftover little hunk of butter and we're going to grease this pan up real good so that it doesn't stick once we get it in there. And then we're going to dump all that glorious green goodness into that pan. And y'all, when I tell you this was work, that is a Dutch oven that is a cast iron Dutch oven, and I love it. It cooks everything wonderfully. You're probably going to see me cook a lot more stuff in there. But that thing weighs at least 5,000 pounds, and I darn near threw my wrist out trying to get these Rice Krispie treats into this doggone pan. But I did it, y'all. Again, I persevered. I pushed through. And we got it done. Now, you're going to have to press these into this pan. So you're going to take that hunk of butter that you had. And y'all, don't panic because I'm not going to serve that butter to anybody. I promise. So you're going to take a, your, your buttered up hands and you're going to press your Rice Krispie Treats down into the pan as much as you can get them down in there. And then you can just decide how big you want your treats and that's how far apart you will space your little hearts. Now I'm going to give these to my grandbabies. So I am not about to get uh, my daughter and her husband upset at me. So I'm going to make these little small treats for my babies. And so you just brace your little hearts out however far you need them to be. And then you just cut them up and pull them out of your pan. You got a whole bunch of little Grinchy treats. Look how cute that is, y'all. Is that not the cutest little thing you've ever seen? Little Grinch treats. If y'all are enjoying the video, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 o'clock. We're going to start out today with these haystacks, the butterscotch haystacks, and this is all you're going to need. You're going to heat up half of a bag of butterscotch chips in the microwave. Now, this is not going to get creamy out of the microwave like chocolate chips do when you heat them up, 
but because they're warm, when you mix that peanut butter in there and it starts to melt the peanut butter, everything gets super, super creamy and smooth, as you can see here. And you're just going to mix this up really well. And then once you get it all mixed up, you're going to just drop in one can of chow mein noodles and a half a cup of peanuts. And you're just going to mix this all around until you get it really good and coated. And then once you get it all mixed up and everything is covered really well, because you want to make sure that it all has the peanut butter butterscotch scotch mixture on there, and that way it'll hold together when it hardens up. All you got to do is drop these by the spoonful on some wax paper. And y'all, that's it. It is really that easy. And I ran out of wax paper because I didn't think I had this many. But you can make them as big or as small as you want. The next one we have is white chocolate haystacks. And these we are going to do in the crock pot. So you're going to need... Uh, two pounds of almond bark, a cup and a half of peanuts, or a cup and a quarter of peanuts, and two and a half cups of pretzel sticks. Now, I'm using a crock pot liner because I figured this was going to stick really bad, and I did not want to have to chisel that out of my crock pot later. The only mistake I did make, I don't use these liners very often, and I should have tucked the liner underneath the crock pot insert part because later when I try to stir them, it slips around. So just be sure you tuck that in. Then you want to spray your liner down good with some cooking spray, and then just cut up uh, your two pounds of almond bark and just break it up into pieces. Stick that in your crock pot, and then you're going to add your peanuts and your pretzels. Now, I did not read the instructions on this recipe, and it actually said to chop up your pecans and to break up your pretzels, but I did not do that. But they turned out just fine anyway, because when you stir them, at least the pretzels anyway are going to break up as you stir them. And I got this off of um, Jen uh, Jennifer at Plowing Through Life, I think is where I got this recipe from. But it is super, super simple, y'all. You just dump it all in the crock pot. The only thing is it tells you to cook it on high for about 30 to 45 minutes like you cook it and stir it after 30 minutes and then cook it in it for another 10 or 20 minutes it did take mine a little bit longer it took mine a little bit over an hour and i don't know if it was just a difference in the crock pot or what but just kind of watch it as you're cooking it because it may take a little longer or it may not take quite as long so once you get everything all melted that's it. That is literally all there is to this recipe. Get you some wax paper, and then you're just going to drop this by the spoonful on your wax paper, as big or as small as you want, just like the other haystacks that you did. And that's it, y'all. Super, super simple, and these are really good. The next thing that we're going to do is no-bake cookies. Now, these are the oatmeal chocolate peanut butter cookies. I'm not sure they have another name other than no-bake cookies. We've been making these, or my mama used to make this when we were kids. So you're going to take a stick of butter, and you're going to put it in a pan, and then you're going to take your two cups of sugar, and you're going to add your uh, quarter cup of cocoa powder and half a cup of milk, and you're going to just melt that, heat it up, get it, you know, all good and mixed up and melted. And you're going to stir this around for, um, once you get it, you want to bring it to a bowl. Once you get it to a bowl, you're going to let it boil for one minute and then you're going to take it off the heat. Then you're going to add your other ingredients to it. I add the peanut butter first and that way it just melts down into that pot liquid without kind of clumping around the oatmeal if you add that first. So just add your uh, peanut butter, a cup of peanut butter, and then you're going to add your vanilla, a tablespoon of vanilla, and then you're just going to mix that around really good until you get that peanut butter all melted, and then you're going to add 
your three cups of oatmeal. I'm not sure it makes a difference whether it's quick cook or whatever. It's just oatmeal. So then you're just going to drop these by the spoonful on some wax paper. And that's it, y'all. Easy as that. They, you can let these just sit up. And they are super delicious. And it clearly it makes a ton of them. But everybody likes these. Now, this recipe comes from one of my good friends, Jan. So, Jan, if you're watching, let me know down in the comments how I did. So, you're going to start out by adding a half a stick of butter and a half a cup of evaporated milk, one cup of white sugar, and one cup of packed brown sugar. And I just mix this up good until my, because I should have let my butter melt a little bit more first, but I did not. So I just let this mix around a little bit till my butter got a little bit softer before I added my pecans in. So you're going to add your pecans in and then you're just going to stir this. And I just stir it constantly because I'm always afraid everything is going to stick and burn. So just stir it, stir it, stir it. And you're going to let this come to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, the instructions say to cook it for three to five minutes. Now, I have found for mine, the way that I like mine, my sweet spot is right about the four and a half minute mark. So once you get it to a boil and you let it boil for the amount of time that you want to, and sometimes it's trial and error, y'all, and if it's a little, you do it and it's a little loose, just cook it a little longer next time. Like if you do it three minutes and it's a little bit runnier than you would like when you, you know, put them on your wax paper, the next batch you make, just make them a little bit, you know, cook them a little bit longer and they'll thicken up a little bit more. So once you get them off the heat, very quickly add your teaspoon of vanilla. And then you're going to stir this for one minute, not any more than one minute, because these are going to start to harden and they're going to start setting up. And then they're going to be, you're not going to be able to get them out of the pan pretty much. So I just took a little scoop and I scooped them all out on my wax paper. And that was it. Y'all, these are super delicious. You have got to give them a try. some graham crackers, some pecans, butter, brown sugar, and some chocolate bars. And you're going to start off by, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350. And then we're going to line an 8x8 eight eight pan with some parchment paper. Now, the original recipe calls for a 9x13, but it's just me here. And, you know, I get my son to stop by and take some of this, but we don't want to overdo it. So you're going to line your pan with those graham crackers on the bottom, and then you're going to get started melting some butter in a pan. Once you get your butter melted, you're going to add your half a cup of brown sugar, and you're going to get that all mixed up. And then once that is all mixed up, you're going to add your half a cup of pecans. Now, if you could add walnuts, if you'd rather walnuts, if you don't like pecans, um, whatever kind of nuts you want to put in there. But I love pecans, so that's what we did. And you're just going to mix this around, and you're going to get it, you bring it to a boil, and then you're going to boil it for five minutes, stirring it constantly because it's sugar, y'all, and you don't want it just to stick to the whole pan. So you're just going to stir it constantly for five minutes, and then once you get that all ready after the five minutes and it's going to be bubbly when you take it off the fire so i just kind of held it for a few seconds and just kind of let the bubbles die down but you can see how bubbly it still is right there so you're going to take this and you're going to pour this all over those graham crackers and try to get it as even as you can i mean you can just kind of dump it in there but it is going to start to you know try to harden up so go ahead and get it in there as quick as you can and get it all spread out. And you just want to make sure that you get it, you know, all of those graham crackers covered. So once you get those all covered up, you're going to pop that in the oven for about seven minutes. 
once you bring it out while it's still hot, put your chocolate bars on top of there, cover it with some foil and let it sit for about 10 minutes to give that chocolate a chance to melt. Then you're just going to spread that chocolate out all over it. And then you could also use chocolate chips here if you don't have chocolate bars. I just happen to have some of those little mini chocolate bars. So once you get your chocolate spread out, you're going to pop it in the freezer. And this is what it looks like when it comes out. You're going to take that out, put it on your counter, and then you can just break it into pieces. I mean, if you wanted to cut it, I guess you could try to cut it. But why? Just break it, y'all. Look, just pop it apart. Look, it was hard to. Maybe you don't have to put it in the freezer, but I was anxious and I was impatient and I wanted to taste it and get it done. So I set it in the freezer, but I'm sure you could just sit it out on the counter if you wanted to. But you just break it all up, y'all, into a whole bunch of little pieces. And this stuff is so stinking good, y'all. I don't think I've ever had this, but it is so delicious. It's sweet and salty and crunchy and ugh. Y'all, you got to try it. You have got to try this. It's so easy. So next up, we have almond coconut balls. Now, I found this on the internet, and I'm going to link the video I found it in. But she didn't have a name on it, so I made up almond coconut balls because, y'all, that's all it is. Now, I know I told y'all I didn't have a food processor, but I, did. I do have a little one. And I need it for things like this because I can't beat this one with the, you know, with the roller. So I got to gotta use the food processor every now and then. All I had was coconut flakes and I needed like kind of finely shredded, almost like a not powdery, but you know, small, just tiny little pieces of coconut. So I just ground those up in the food processor real fast. So all you're going to need for this, and I have this recipe also, and you're going to see me pour this in here. And when I start measuring, I realize I don't have enough coconut to do a full recipe of this, and that's the only reason I halved it. So I'm going to give you the measurements for half of the recipe. So this is one and one-third cup of coconut, and then you're going to need a little bit of extra. So I had about two cups total because you're going to need some to roll it in later. And then you're going to take, I used a half of a can of sweetened condensed milk, because, of course, the full recipe calls for the whole can, but I halved it. So you're just going to get this all mixed up. And then once you get it all, you know, incorporated, it's going to be really sticky. Just sit it to the side and um, just let it sit there while you do, while you fling it on the counter like I did. Of course, because what would, what would a cooking video of mine be if you didn't fling something on the counter, right? So get this all mixed up anyway, y'all. And then stick it over to the side and just let it sit. And then you're going to need to get the next part of the recipe together. So you're going to take some water and you're going to put, I put a quarter of a cup because I wasn't thinking that's what it called for for the original recipe. But I, you, would, you don't need but about 10 almonds. So you're going to boil those and then you're going to fling them on the counter. See, again, it's, it's, it's one of my recipes, y'all. Come on. So you're just going to, once you boil these, you can just squeeze the skin off of those almonds. It just pops right on out. I had no idea. No idea that that was a thing, y'all. So you're just going to sit here and squeeze these poor little almonds and take their little covering off. And then that is what is going to be in the center of these little treats. It's not a cookie because it doesn't really get solid. Look at them little naked almonds. So now's the messy part, y'all. You're going to scoop up a little bit of this in your hand. And then I realized I didn't have enough, so I had to add a little bit. Because, you know, it's a learning process. It's a learning process. I'm learning, so y'all won't have to. So you're going to roll these into a ball and then smash them down a little bit. And then you're going to take your almond and press it right in the center and then cover it. And, you know, so, you're, so your almond is the center of this little thing. Then you're just going to roll it all around again. And then you're going to roll this in that coconut that you had left over. And you're just going to do this to all these little coconut balls. Y'all, this thing, I have never heard of this. Never heard of such. I don't know where she got this recipe from, if it's just something she made up. But these are, these are good, y'all. Now, they're rich. They are very rich. You can't eat more than one. I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to, but they really, really rich, y'all. 
but they're delicious. So you're just going to keep on rolling those little balls up, putting them little almonds in there, and then rolling them in that coconut. And I mean, I don't, if you don't like coconut pecans, I don't know what to tell you because I don't think you can substitute anything for this one, y'all, because that's all there is in it. So just keep on rolling your little balls up. And I ended up with, let's see, was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about, about 10 or 11 of those. But that's all, honey, that's all you need. I'm telling you, you can share these. It's a lot of sweetness, but they're really good. Really good. So this one is an easy one. We're going to preheat your oven to 350, and then these are all the ingredients you're going to need. We're going to mix this up with a pack of cake mix. Now, y'all stop laughing because all I had was that confetti cake mix, and I know that's not Christmassy, and this is a Christmas video, but at the end of all this, I'm going to show you I also made some chocolate chip and some red velvet another time, but, you know... I just wanted to show y'all this so you could see it step by step instead of just looking at pictures. So you're going to add your box of cake mix, one third of a cup of oil, two eggs, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. And if you, you don't have to do sprinkles and stuff, y'all, if you don't want to, but I was trying to look, flung, look at me, flung, I flung everything on the counter, y'all. I need a maid. Somebody come help me clean my kitchen. So anyway, you get it all mixed up. And then you just scoop it out onto your cookie sheet. And this made three, six, nine, twelve, about 12. And so you just put them in the oven and you bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes. I think I did go the full 12 on mine. Now, you sh I should have added sprinkles before this if I was going to add sprinkles. But like I said, these were those little confetti cookies. So I wasn't trying to, I'm not taking these to any family gatherings. You know what I'm saying? So while it's still kind of warm, I decided I'd go ahead and just try to, you know, just put a few sprinkles on there. Well, I would fight the sprinkles because, again, y'all, I'm flinging them all over the kitchen. It's terrible. It's terrible. I have a problem. I need help. But anyway, you just put your little sprinkles on there if you want them. But if you really want sprinkles on them, y'all put them on there before you bake them, and that way they'll stick. These did stick. I had sprinkles going everywhere. But you just, once you get your little sprinkles, whatever you're doing, just take them out, put them on your little wire rack, and then just let them cool down. And y'all, look at the inside of these things. and They are so dang delicious. It's it's not cakey, but it's not cookie either. It's, it's a really good mix kind of in between. But they are so, so good. Mm -hmm.